yeah, let's let's start this off with uh, Casey. If you tell us a little bit about um, your story, your history, and what you do now, and then we'll jump into the conversation. Sure. My name is Casey Capshaw. I run the Authentic Man program here in Boulder, Colorado, and uh, my story. I don't know. It's a long and winding one, but uh, from a very young age, I just remember asking pretty big questions. You know, I grew up in Oklahoma and. Uh, kind of a conservative Christian culture around there. And, mm -hmm. you know, this whole God question came into my mind uh, as a teenager. You know, is is there a God? You know, what was my relation to, to this or whatever? And I struggled with it. You know, I had to sort of uh, push up against the culture I was in, uh, kind of break free of some of the comfort of, of that culture uh, in the name of truth. Like I, I was just wanting something truer, you know, like, is this thing true and how do I know it's true? You know, so I ended up studying philosophy in college and, you know, went down the existential philosophy rabbit hole and just mm -hmm. really like kept asking and kept asking. And that led me into Zen Buddhism where it's just, you know, <laughs> sit here and the answer will show up. Yeah. Kind of. um, but I just kept peeling away layers and, um, you know, I came into men's work about seven years ago. Um, with uh, just the, the same kind of question, like, what is this men's work thing, right? And uh, I actually helped start the New Man podcast with okay. Trip Lanier. And we we started the show, just let's just explore this men's work thing. Like, it's kind of this uh, emerging um, phenomenon, and let's let's explore it. So I started a men's group, started that podcast, and we just started asking people, like, what, what's important for men, you know? And we interviewed a ton of people. Trip still does that podcast. Yeah. Um, but we did that, and then, you know, through that process, I was actually practicing, quote, men's work with my own group that's actually still together to this day. Very cool. And around that time, we actually, I went to the Authentic Man program out in San Francisco to check out what these guys were doing, and uh, I just got cracked open. I, uh, I, got, I got to see something about myself that had always been there uh, that I had no awareness of. Wow. That's this... Um, you know, it was this way in which, especially with women, with all relationships, really, but with women, I was uh, with one hand and like consciously saying I wanted relationship, connection, love, but with the other hand and unconsciously, I was like holding them at arm's length because I was terrified somewhere in there of just of being hurt. And seeing this at my amp intensive was like waking up in the matrix. I mean, I was like, oh my God, like I'm doing this and I've always been doing this, right? And I mean, I was in tears. I was cracked open. I was just a mess because <laughs> um, I was reflecting back on life and like how much I had lost not being able to be essentially be vulnerable, not being able to let people in let, to allow true intimacy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so from that point on, I sort of vowed to support men in having more of that, you know, more freedom um, through this self-awareness path. Like, you know yourself and you you have choice. Mm -hmm. And all of us, uh, even, you know, me after 10 years of personal development, I, there's unconscious things that run me and I don't have freedom around those things because I don't even see them. Right. So yeah. uh, a lot of what we do with AMP is just to try to, we call it, see the water you're swimming in. You know, if you ask a fish, how's the water? He's like, w what water? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about, if you take him out of the water, he's like, holy shit, where's the water? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So a lot of what we do with AMP is like to take men out of the water that they've always been swimming. In. And then, you know, they can stay in the water if they want, but having some choice around it, having more freedom. Could that, you know, um, I guess exposing them to the water that they're swimming in, w would you say that's similar to like the, the shadow self or is that, is it different? It can be. I mean, it, it certainly can be. Yeah. Like, uh, so, like for me, it was right. Like I got to see this unconscious, unknown, un, out of part of myself, this part of that thinks it needs to protect me. And it was a complete like shadow revelation. Um, I, th I think there's, it's to some degree, uh, that's true. That's, that's what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. Um, it happens on a gradation. Like sometimes it's just like a little bit of the shadow. Sometimes it's like, holy shit, the core wound comes out, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, it's that bringing the unconscious into, into conscious awareness. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I very much and in line with that, just the the concept of awareness and how empowering that is. And one of the other interviews that we did um, with Bill Harris of Holosync, you know, he was talking mm -hmm. about meditation, but we went off on a little bit of a tangent on awareness and why that's so important. Um, yeah, I know. I know, Bill. And uh, yeah, meditation is a huge tool in my uh, toolbox for for bringing awareness. And so one thing that we say is uh, what we do is 
is kind of an intersubjective meditation, meaning it's meditation in relationship. So a lot of the uh, Zen guys I follow tend to come to the realization that you could sit on a cushion your whole life and you'll get a lot of insight, uh, but you may never see the, you know, the piece of lettuce in your teeth, right? Like you can't see what you can't see. Yeah. So uh, meditation alone doesn't quite get at the shadow uh, as effectively as some of the more Western techniques, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, on, in the West, the, the contribution we've given to personal development is psychotherapy, shadow work, and you know, Jungian archetypes and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're looking for an integration of East and West, um, where yes, sit on a cushion, yes, thyself, like look in, into your own being, but also get curious about what other people are seeing. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to hide when you have like ten pairs of eyes on you. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're making an effort to explore and they're actually curious about you. I mean, that's kind of what we do in Nap Intensive. We get a we get a group and we we just curious and see what it's like for the guy. And um, in my experience with Amp, the way the guys were getting curious about me, I mechanism were putting up um, the front, the persona. I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> There's too much attention on you know the subtleties, right? So I could I could I could maintain the bullshit with one guy, but not with all three of them. You know? Yeah, yeah. So how does uh, integrity fit into all of this? Yeah, well, so if we're if if we're looking for effectiveness, and you know, for me, under that is freedom. Mm -hmm. um, freedom implies like I get to choose in any in any situation, and uh, so as I've been doing this work with men, I've come to see the value of integrity, um, and there's a lot of aspects of that. I mean, on the surface, there's something just attractive about it. And, and, you know, we don't even, you know, integrity means something different to every one of us. Yeah. But it's kind of, there's a universal attractiveness um, for women and men. Uh, you know, as a man, like, if I see a man demonstrate integrity, I start to feel trust. And I want to surround people with peop with men I trust. Yeah. Right? Uh, I, and I think that's, it, it goes back to, like, hunter-gatherer. Like, it, it's instinctual. You mm -hmm. know, when we were going to go out uh, to... Uh, fight the woolly mammoth or whatever. Like, I need to know you're going to get my back or I'm going to die. Yeah, right? yeah. Same thing for, like, a battle, right? If we're, if we're going to battle, like, I need to know you're going to be there or, or I'm going to die, you mm -hmm. know? So trust is this deep, instinctual thing for men, um, which I think is, is hugely important. And it just, I just feel it, you know? I just feel it in my bones. Like, this, I, I have this, like, sensor for integrity and trust. Yeah. Um, and so... You know what I'd say is for women it's it's the same kind of thing, but for them it's uh it's a it's a, like a survival necessity, you know. I mean, not so much now, but like back in the hunter gatherer days, uh, this woman needs to know that one, you're not going to kill her. <laughs> yeah. Two, she can trust you with her with her intimate body, you know. And three, that you might stick around to help raise the child. You know, it's a real survival um, root. And you know, we may be a long way from our hunter gatherer <laughs> lifestyle, but our brains are still, you know, evolved from that. It's still in us. So, mm -hmm. so integrity is attractive. Like, you know, women are feeling it, men are noticing it, you know, uh, everywhere we go. Yeah. And it's really a, a win-win situation for everybody involved. If, if everybody um, maintains integrity, right? <laughs> I think so. I mean, you know, this, you know, kind of gets me into like, I, I, there's kind of two sides to integrity for me, mm -hmm. you know, so if we, we're talking about integrity, like what's it mean? And, you know, the, on the one side is kind of the obvious, like, you know, you mean what you say, you say what you mean, or I can count on you. Like you tell me you're going to do something, you actually do it. Mm -hmm. Like that's the sort of pop integrity. Mm -hmm. um, in, in AMP and in my world, there's another side of it. There's another definition that's, you know, n not so much spoken about. And that's, integrity is what do I want to bring to this moment? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, how do I want to contribute my gifts? How do I want to express my spirit in this moment? Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it's an essential part of integrity. And I think a lot of guys really suffer on this point. Uh, you know, it's the kind of thing where like you, you're working in an office cubicle job that you fucking hate, but you're doing it cause you think you should, you know, you're not in integrity of what you actually want to be doing, the life you actually want to be living. Mm -hmm. So, and the, and these two work really well together. If I'm actually bringing myself to each and every moment, that would include uh, 
keeping my commitments, uh, keeping my agreements, like doing what I say I want to do, right? So the inside is like, who do I want to be in this moment? The outside is, can I trust you, Mm -hmm. right? And so that's why I think one way I think integrity is essential. And, and, and like, I like the definition of like, what do I want to bring? Like if, if I'm aware of what's happening, if I can accept reality as it is, what's my unique gift to bring to it? Mm -hmm. And so how do you, for some of the guys out there, how do you even uh, know what those gifts are? Yeah. I mean, this is uh, the age old question, (laughs) Uh, but I think it's, this is, uh, it's kind of like a, a thread or like a, a breadcrumb crumb trail that you can follow. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, simplest is just take a moment, pause, check in and like, what do I want right now? Mm-hmm. Right. What do I want right now? And it could be a, a subtle, like I want to continue talking to you mm-hmm. or I, or I want to, I want to not continue talking to you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and to actually practice honoring that moment. Right. So the, the integrity is not just what do I want, but like, am I willing to do it? <laughs> You know, yeah, and it, it, and a lot of guys, you know, in men's work, we always talk about purpose. You know, David Data is huge for bringing purpose, the importance of purpose in on men's work. Mm-hmm. Well, what happens and happened for me is like you hear about this purpose thing and you have this grand vision for like what purpose is, and then you kind of freak out, like, well, I don't know what my purpose is, I don't know what my purpose is, right? Yeah, uh, this, um, integrity, like the desire side of integrity, is just easy to follow. Like, right now, your purpose is whatever you want. <laughs> right mm-hmm. in this moment and then you know don't get lost in that like does this contribute to a bigger purpose does this contribute to a bigger purpose right mm-hmm. does this contribute to a bigger desire right like if if what i want right now is to play xbox but somewhere in my life what i really want is to be a successful you know game developer <laughs> it might be xbox might be contributing mm-hmm. and, and it might not right but you have to kind of check in on the million layers of of integrity that you're living under yeah, and um, one of the interviews we did, we talked about core values and how that factors in. Do you have anything to say about core values and integrity? Because I think it, being aware and defining your core values might make it easier for you to, to check in moment to moment with you know, what you're doing and whether you're on track or not. Yeah, I love I love the idea of core values. I think it's kind of a shorthand. It's like a generalization mm-hmm. um, for sort of a set of desires that are consistent, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a set of desire integrity that seem to happen over and over, right? So, if core desire, if, if core values is useful to you, use it. If if you're not sure, this practice of just checking in with what you're wanting will reveal your core values. I think uh, if, if you consistently are wanting uh, freedom over safety, mm-hmm. right? If you're consistently wanting uh, adventure over stability, you know, whatever, like you can just identify a few values and like look for the consistency. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, f- like one of mine is freedom. Freedom is a huge value f- for me. And it, it's because I've started to notice like at, at every option, I choose freedom over whatever else, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, core values. And so like after a while, you start to be like, yeah, like I like freedom. I like uh, integrity. I like, you know, whatever these core values are for you. And it it becomes a shorthand way to, to share about yourself. Mm -hmm. So again, back to what we were talking about earlier, it it seems like awareness is a a major factor here. Self-awareness. Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, I I love, you know, the Bill Harris, you know, talking about meditation. That's just a great way to sort of bring awareness to what's happening right here in this moment. Mm -hmm. Um, It's really easy for, to get distract, distracted, especially in this day and age. I mean, my iPhone's going off every two minutes. Like, you know, I've got uh, infinite amount of information at my fingertips. You know, like, distractibility is easy. It's taking 15 minutes and just sitting down in the, on the corner of the room and just watching. It, it's, a big, it's a big deal. I mean, it sounds like not that big a deal, but it, it really is. I mean, I've been a meditator for probably 15 years now. And, um, it informs my ability to live my life because it, it strengthens that muscle of presence. What's, what's happening right now? Uh, not just in my mental space, but in my body and in my emotional body and, and like in the people around me, you know? Yeah, definitely. So integrity, you know, you're one part of the, the definition of it you gave is, 
you know, figuring out what you want to bring to the moment, um, you know, what are your gifts and awareness is, seems to be the key factor in that. And, you know, now we're talking about meditation as a good way of achieving that. Um, what other practical ways can we increase our awareness and in turn increase our integrity? Yeah, that's great. Uh, so in terms of increasing awareness, or I call it presence, uh, you know, if you, if you don't have an embodiment practice, like some kind of physical practice, mm -hmm. get one. <laughs> like like what? Uh, like strength training or running or surfing or, you know, some kind of thing where you're like using your body and you're moving and you're circulating your blood. Like our bodies are made for that. And mm -hmm. modern living really support us to move that much, but it actually encourages us not to move. Yeah. And, I, you know, I'm telling you, kind of telling myself, like I have to – have to constantly remember to get out there and move around because you know i'm an athlete i've been an athlete my whole life like i have a high degree of body awareness because i've had to right if you play you play baseball you have to put your body in the right place or you'll get hit by a hard <laughs> leather ball you know mm -hmm. um so that's an amazing way to to cultivate presence if, if anyone's not checking in with the with their body frequently um do that <laughs> Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Um, I do have Doug McGuff. He's one of the last interviews I'm doing, mm -hmm. and he's going to be talking about weight training, you know, what he does. Um, but I've I really wanted to – I don't think – you know, obviously a lot of guys are aware of the importance of being physical. And in my mind, lifting weights, strength training is, is a huge one. Um, but can you elaborate a little bit on the body awareness and how – being physical really um, translates to success and integrity and all these, you know, beneficial things. Yeah, well, it's hard. I love strength training. That's my favorite of mm -hmm. all of them. Uh, it's just so intense. Like if yeah. you actually, if you actually take on a real strength training practice, not like a, I'm reading my Facebook while I'm walking on the treadmill, you know, like on the machines or whatever. Like you have to actually exert yourself. You have to actually bring yourself. And it, what it is, strength training is. It's not even a, I mean, it's a physical, but it's, it's also like a, it's emotional, psychological game. Like how much focus and intensity can I put into this moment in this body part, right? Mm -hmm. And when you do that and then you go to work, or whatever, go, go on a date or something, it's really hard to forget that body part, right? It's really hard to lose awareness of that thing that you've just put so much of your self into, mm -hmm. right? And the effect of like being in touch with like every cell in your body, it, it transmits like people can, you feel, they call it feeling you know, embodied, right? Like if someone walks in and you can tell that they're just at home in their vehicle, in their physical body, mm -hmm. it's like you can, it's like they're 3d, like they're, they're <laughs> multidimensional being. You can, you've trust, there's a trust thing. It's like, I, okay, you're here. I got it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas if I, you know, spend all day on the computer doing coding or whatever, I kind of get, disconnected to my body because I, I kind of have to, I have to, all resources go to the mind to do the mental game. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, I'm like awkward, less coordinated, you know, not feeling, you know, um, so I did, you know, I, I think it's a practice that all men need to return to. And, you know, not to mention the physiological benefits of, you know, better hormone production, better, you know, lymphatic movement, better circulation, you know, all that stuff. It's just like you, you're tuning up your vehicle, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I find that the, the physical body, like through bringing awareness through the physical body, it's like if I, if I can feel if I'm embodied, then I can start to feel like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling sad. Or I'm feeling ecstatic or, you know, those emotions come from somewhere in the body, it seems like, too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it seems like... It, it makes, you know, strength training makes us more connected with our bodies, which in turn makes us more connected with ourselves, you know, the, um, the more um, mental, emotional aspects of ourselves and the, the physical world, the external reality. Yeah, it'll make you a better lover. I mean, if you can actually feel what's happening in your body, sex is way better. Yeah, <laughs> you <know>? yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, it just, it translates across the board. And, you know, I could go on about this, but like, especially strength training, it's like getting in touch with the, the raw fucking power that is our birthright. Yeah. I mean, there's a warrior inside each of us. And 
when you put 225 pounds on a bar and get underneath it, that warrior's coming out because <laughs> he doesn't want to be crushed. You know? It has to, right? <laughs> yeah, and it feels good, man. There's not a lot of places where you just get to let that out mm-hmm. safely. I mean, I'm all for civilization and you know not being gladiators and all that stuff, but yeah. <laughs> it's in there. Like We have it in us. We mm-hmm. have a, a killer. We have a, a, a wild man inside there, Yeah, and we freaking tranquilize it with modern living you know so strength training is one awesome outlet just to go and just get it out Mm -hmm. okay to bring this back to the 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 trail of the conversation here you know strength training is a great way to um bring about presence and awareness and all of that so where where else can we go with this what else can improve our awareness and our presence yeah well i mean to get back you know to integrity Mm-hmm. If you if you want to go back there, uh, yeah. you know, there's like tr- I've mentioned trust a few times. Like trust is sort of implied in integrity uh, for me. And if we're talking about effective man, we're talking about freedom. Uh, inspiring trust carries a massive influence, mm-hmm. right? Like the, the the great leader inspires trust. You know, trust is what gets us referrals. Like I'm not going to refer you to some job or whatever if I don't trust you. Mm-hmm. Right. Introductions, like even dates, like I'm not going to set you up with, uh, you know, my sister. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I fucking <laughs> trust you, you know? Yeah. So, it, you know, integrity is this like this glue that holds us together um, as a society. You know, it's 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 the it's like the, the fabric of our civilization in a sense. Mm-hmm. It's that trust for each other that, that I know that you're you're going to play the same game I'm playing. You're going to we're on the same page here. Um, you know, and it's interesting, you know, my definition of integrity is really, um, uh, agentic, you know, it's like, it starts with I, Mm -hmm. you know, it's what do I want? And it's, I think it's interesting that the result is communal. It's, you know, this fabric of civilization. (laughs) If I start with what I want, I actually result in what we want, right? I result in uh, us trusting each other, which I think is a fascinating yeah, can you elab- elaborate on that connection a little bit? How that uh, how that plays out? Uh, I can try. So, uh, you know, one useful duality that we seem to live under is this, like I, I mentioned, agency and communion. Mm-hmm. Right? There's a sort of a tension between what do I want and what do we want. Right? What's good for me? What's good for us? Yeah. And these have been, you know, evolutionary tensions for a long time. I mean, at some point, it started to make more sense for humans to survive to work together. Yeah. Right. And then at other, and even at times, you know, altruism became the highest value because there was conditions were such that we had to self-sacrifice completely to, to even live, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, And then you've seen it gone, gone too far into like, you know, Soviet communism is like your individuality means nothing. It's all about the group and you know, whatever (laughs) goes along with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But my point is that they're always in tension. Right. There's always what I want and then what's good for us. Mm-hmm. And my invitation is to, to let it be OK to start with what you want. Right. And for a lot of us, for a lot of men, we're told like selfishness is bad. Uh, don't be selfish, whatever. And, you know, I think that's to an excess, certainly. But my position is that no matter what you do, it's selfish. Right. Even if I do something altruistic, it's because I want to. Yeah. So it's coming from my own desire, my own self-interest. Even if I jump in front of a bullet, it's because I want to be the guy who jumps in front of a bullet for you, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, So, so uh, my path here is is uh, honoring the polarity of agency versus communion, and trusting that agency is where you start. I mean, you can't start at communion. (laughs) You just that's not how we're built. We're not the Borg, right? We we can't start knowing what the other people want and need we can only start with knowing what we want and need yeah yeah that's interesting that you mentioned this because it's a big part of what i'm doing with this project you know i've been figuring you know trying to figure out for a while now how i can best contribute my gifts to the world and i tend to think Mm -hmm. on a very large scale like the world scale you know as far as issues and you know war and and all of all of the, the the bad aspects and how i can help you know contribute to to making them better and fixing them and uh the i guess the point that i i guess the realization that i had and why i'm doing this is 
you know, if if we develop ourselves as individuals and we make ourselves more whole and satisfied and happy, we're in a much better place to go ahead and contribute to that which is greater than us, contribute to society and civilization and all of that. I agree 100%. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, heal the wounds you picked up from your father so that you don't pass them down to your son. Yeah, definitely. It's 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 like it's our imperative, mm-hmm. right? It's uh I mean, you know, the Buddhists call it karma, and karma sometimes gets this like mystical implication, but it's not, man. It's karma is my dad beat me and therefore I'm going to beat my son because that's how I know. That's how that's all I know, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh personal development work, men's work, whatever is intervening in the karmic cycle it's mm-hmm. saying no more like we're not going to do that from a place without choice we're going to we're going to live our lives from choice mm-hmm. and it's it's imperative i mean if you want to change the world change yourself like start right here you know don't don't spank your children <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, like treat your neighbor with love and respect because you don't because you feel so much abundance that you don't you don't feel threatened right mm-hmm. um two things uh one i just want to mention a pitfall like so yeah. the pitfall of, of everything I'm talking about here is uh, I call narcissism. Like yeah. if you, you you gaze at your navel long enough, all you're going to see is your navel. Yeah, <laughs> <Right>? definitely. <laughs> and uh, I live in Boulder, which is a really progressive uh, culture. A lot of people doing a lot of work. And the number one challenge we have here is is narcissism. It's like people get so overwhelmed in their own process or so attuned to it that they actually can't even care about the other people. They can't even they're not even real almost like the other people are just figments of their own process right yeah so, yeah so if there was one pitfall i want to encourage men to watch out for it's it's narcissism i mean it's yes it's what you want but it's actually what you want and, and fully respecting what other want like what does that girl want like you might want a secular but what does she want right mm-hmm. it's like honor your own desire equally as much as you honor their desire yeah yeah uh, and i think that's one sort of antidote for narcissism is curiosity. Like, well, what do you want, right? Um, not collapsing into what they want necessarily. You know, hold your own position, but like curious and, and accepting of what the world wants from you. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I really want to talk about, I, I, it's, it's just responsibility. So this, this feeds right in. Like a, one uh, antidote for narcissism is, um, is this responsibility angle. So one way to think about increasing integrity is increasing responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, you often hear the quote, uh, with great power comes great responsibility, right? Yeah. I think superheroes like that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's true, right? But so my, my claim, my position here is that the inverse is also true. If we assume responsibility, power to execute on that assumption of responsibility will follow. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can be scary to a lot of people, you know, with me, it was like, well, when I know what my purpose is, then I'll go do it. Right. Yeah. When I know how to do it, then I'll go do it. Um, what I'm inviting here is assume it's your responsibility. I assume it's my responsibility and, and then look for ways to take care of it. Right. Like if there's one thing that really like freaks me out about our culture is that anytime we encounter something we don't like, we assume it's someone else's responsibility. Yeah. Like, oh, someone needs to put a fence up here. Oh, someone needs to make a law to fix this, you know. And, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes that might be true. But if it was actually my responsibility to make it better, what would I do? Right? What would I do? Mm-hmm. And I think if you actually ask that question, you'll find that you, you'll find the power to do a lot of these things. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And um, I think... <laughs> I think it's important that you mention that once you, once you assume the responsibility, the, the power follows with that. Okay, Casey, I think we're coming up towards the end of our, our conversation here. Um, I have one question I want to ask you before we close out. Is there anything else you want to you cover? No, yeah, let's, 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 let's close it up. Okay, so I've been asking all the other guys, are there any uh, mistakes that you've made in your life, any major lessons that you've learned that you're willing to share with us so that we can hopefully learn from your mistakes without necessarily making them ourselves. <laughs> oh man, I've made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> uh, well, in one sense, I want to say just make the mistakes, right? Like just, just live and fuck up and that's the best teacher. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, if I had one thing I would want to do over again, I was extremely naive and prideful in my 20s. Yeah. I, I thought I knew how the world works. And okay. so if there's any invitation, it's, it's just for fucking humility. Like, we don't know anything, man. <laughs> like everything I've shared with you today, try it on, see if it fits. Like, I don't know. And, and you know, we never will know. And, and, you know, from that place, we can be humble. We can be accessible. We can connect. Uh, we can actually learn things. We can, we can solve problems. So um, keep an eye on, on pride <laughs> when you're young. Yeah, thanks for sharing that with us. And I can definitely relate with that. And that's what you just mentioned is definitely, a, I guess, a conclusion that I've reached out of the self-exploration that I've done so far is that I don't know anything. And anybody out there who says they know something, you got to take it with a grain of salt, you know? <laughs> definitely. I mean, you know, this is the other conversation I wanted to have with you, but it's about curiosity. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to go into it now, but if it's true that I know nothing, and I think it's actually true, like even if I think I know, you know, the sun's going to come out tomorrow, do I act, how do I actually know? Like it might not, right? Like something, <laughs> something different could certainly occur in every moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it always has, right? The, life is always evolving and changing. Every moment's different. I really know nothing. Mm-hmm. If that's true, then what's my, own, my only sane response is to be purely curious, like a like a baby, like an infant, like just purely curious. What is happening now? Mm-hmm. It sounds simple, but it's actually it's it's actually not. <laughs> it's actually kind of a profound thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. the The simple things often are the the most complex and deep, and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. All right, Kat, uh, Casey. It's been a uh, it's been great talking to you. Thanks so much for doing this. Uh, is there anything else you want to you want to say before we close out? Uh, just if you're interested in what I do, it's you can find me at authenticmanprogram.com and um I love I'd love to see where this uh, effective man summit goes. I look forward to hearing some of the interviews and uh I appreciate you for taking a step uh towards doing something you want and uh I'm looking forward to seeing the results. Yeah, of course. And we'll uh we'll include links to to your website and everything on the effective man website so all the audience can go and and check you out. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, thanks thanks again for doing this, Casey. Men's work with my own group that's actually still together to this day. Very cool. And around that time we actually I went to the Authentic Man program out in San Francisco to check out what these guys were doing and uh I just got cracked open. I uh I got I got to see something about myself that had always been there uh, that I had no awareness of. Wow. It was, this, um, you know, it was this way in which, especially with women, with all relationships really, but with women I was uh, with one hand and like consciously saying I wanted relationship connection love, but with the other hand and unconsciously I was like holding them at arm's length because I was terrified somewhere in there of just of being hurt. And seeing this at my amp intensive was like, waking up in the matrix. I mean, I was like, Oh my God, like I'm doing this and I've always been doing this. Right. And I mean, I was in tears. I was cracked open. I was just a mess. Um, cause I was reflecting back on life and like how much I had lost, not being able to be essentially be vulnerable, not being able to let people in let, to allow true intimacy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so from that point on, I sort of vowed to support men Let's, let's start this off with uh, Casey. If you tell us a little bit about um, your story, your history, and what you do now, and then we'll jump into the conversation. Sure. My name is Casey Capshaw. I run the Authentic Man program here in Boulder, Colorado. And uh, my story, I don't know, it's a long and winding one, but uh, from a very young age, I just remember asking pretty big questions. You know, I grew up in Oklahoma and uh, 
kind of a conservative Christian culture around there. And, Mm -hmm. you know, this whole God question came into my mind uh, as a teenager. You know, is is there a God? You know, what was my relation to to this or whatever? And I struggled with it. You know, I had to sort of uh, push up against the culture I was in, uh, kind of break free of some of the comfort of of that culture uh, in the name of truth. Like I I was just wanting something truer, you know, like, is this thing true and how do I know it's true? You know, so I ended up studying philosophy in college and, you know, went down the existential philosophy rabbit hole and just Mm -hmm. really like kept asking and kept asking. That led me into Zen Buddhism where it's just, you know, (laughs) sit here and the answer will show up. Yeah. Um, But I just kept peeling away layers and, um, you know, I came into men's work about seven years ago, um, with, uh, just the the same kind of question, like, what is this men's work thing? Right. And, uh, I actually helped start the new man podcast with Trip Lanier and we, we started the show just, let's just explore this men's work thing. Like it's kind of this uh, emerging, um, phenomenon and let's, let's explore it. So I started a men's group, started that podcast and we just started asking people like, what's important for men, you know, and we interviewed a ton of people. Trip still does that podcast. Yeah. Um, but we did that, and then, you know, through that process, I was actually practicing, quote, some degree. Uh, that's true. That's that's what I'm getting at. Mm-hmm. Um, it happens on a gradation. Like, sometimes it's just, like, a little bit of the shadow. Sometimes it's like, holy shit, the core wound comes out, you know? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that, it's that bringing the unconscious into, into conscious awareness. Okay, yeah. And I, I, I very much am in line with that, just the – the concept of awareness and how empowering that is. And one of the other interviews that we did um, with Bill Harris of Holosync, you know, he was talking Mm -hmm. about meditation, but we went off on a little bit of a tangent on awareness and why that's so important. Um, Yeah, I know, I know Bill and uh, yeah, meditation is a huge tool in my uh, toolbox for, for bringing awareness. So one thing that we say is uh, what we do is kind of an objective meditation, meaning it's meditation in relationship. So a lot of the uh, Zen guys I follow tend to come to the realization that you could sit on a cushion your whole life and you'll get a lot of insight, uh, but you may never see the, you know, the piece of lettuce in your teeth, right? Like you can't see what you can't see. Yeah. So uh, meditation alone doesn't mean having more of that, you know, more freedom um, through this self-awareness path. Like you know yourself and you, you have choice. Mm-hmm. And all of us, uh, even, you know, me after 10 years of personal development, I, there's unconscious things that run me and I don't have freedom around those things because I don't even see them. Right. So yeah. uh, a lot of what we do with AMP is just to try to, we call it, to see the water you're swimming in. You know, if you ask a fish, how's the water? He's like, w- what water? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you talking about? If you take him out of the water, he's like, holy shit, where's the water? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So a lot of what we do with AMP is like to take men out of the water that they've always been swimming. In. And then, you know, they can stay in the water if they want, but having some choice around it, having more freedom. Could that, you know, um, I guess exposing them to the water that they're swimming in, w- would you say that's similar to like the, the shadow self or is that, is it different? It can be. I mean, it, it certainly can be. Yeah. Like, uh, so, like for me, it was right. Like I got to see this unconscious, unknown, un, out of part of myself, this part of that thinks it needs to protect me. And it was a complete like shadow revelation. Um, I, th- I think there's, it's to 